Thankfully, it is just a short delay as we get into this lower bracket matchup here. Aurora Gaming against Gen 1. Everyone expecting Aurora Gaming to win this and keep themselves alive in the qualifier. Can Gen 1 find a way to make the upset happen? Well, we've already seen one underdog story come into fruition. Why not a second? This pistol round's looking pretty good for Aurora. The bomb's taking a... It's, it's sweet time to come across and... Gen 1 now are setting up and preparing for the retake. I am very cautious of what, like, Penzi and Nori are going to be able to do in this position because they are not with the rest of the team. They're holding for the extremities. And we're going to see Nori come in as a late flank and Kenzie now come in through a major join up. All right, well, all hell breaking loose on this A bomb side as Gen 1 look to try and make the retake. And they've got a smoke made on Deva Duvek. The Julie's looking to try and find a way into the thick of things. There's a snake in the grass, though. There's a dagger that will be stabbing Gen 1 in the back. But that smoke on the bomb is certainly going to make life uncomfortable here for the team. Thankfully, Norby can see him, but first has to kill the first player. He's oh run out of ammo. My oh my goodness. I love Deva Duvek so much because you know what most players do in that position, Freddy? They let go of the defuse to try to take the fight themselves. I mean, Deva Duvek, balls of steel right there. But a massive blunder from Norway. He had that round in the palm of his hands and he fluffs his lines. Drac, though, with a miraculous quad kill. Gen 1 on the board early on. Yeah, as you say, Norway had the shots there. The player's back sticking out the smoke. It should have been an easy frag for him, but he panicked a little bit. And uh, like I say, 9 out of 10 players in Deva Duvek's position let go of the defuse to, to get, get the kill. 99 out of 100. If they do find the frag, there we go. Even if they do find the frag, there's no way to get the defuse afterwards. So it's always just such a pointless thing to do. But he just trusts his teammate. He trusts God. As you should, guys. Find the Lord. Here we go. It's a 4 5 in the Oh, and that's a good opening kill, but even better flashbang. Kersey set up for success. And he takes that opportunity. However, everyone around him falling and Deco. Well, maybe I don't hate the fact that he's going to be rifling. Yeah, I mean, brilliant double kill coming through from him. Aurora Gaming go back to the scene of the crime. And you know what? <laughs> Deco on this rifle is loving life right now. But Bruxy will find two snapshots coming through from him. Kenzie needs to finish it off and he will. Yeah, the one thing I will say about Deco on the rifle is that he is a player who just loves to take gunfights. And, yeah. and you know... We've seen quite a few authors move in to everyone kind of has to be a hybrid now. And there's quite a few authors who have just prioritized the rifle. I mean, Zaiwu is a good example of someone who's doing it for a long time. Nico Dodge as well. So I don't hate the idea. I think Deco can be devastating on the rifle, but he's just so good on the eye on the AWP, man. It's almost like from a selfish perspective, I want to see him sniping. I think it'll be really, really cool. Um, like, I think he will be orping in the future, but right now they're using Bricks, who is the Academy player orp, which we were talking about. And, well, Gen 1, they're going to be forcing back into this round. However, to no avail for that opening kill. Lackey owns Bruxy. He was the one player that started getting things going. Um, but now, Gen 1, you know, 4 versus 5. if they can keep the force wars up here but it's going to be a tall order of course this is gen one's pick and they find themselves on the ct side right now but aurora are anubis enjoyers i haven't really been able to speak about the veto much and i know that they've kind of fallen out of the map lately have aurora, but it, it's still a hunting ground they're very familiar with right map two being dust two um aurora I think they, they had it picked into them against uh, Gamer Legion. No, they didn't play it then. Did they not? So, oh yeah, so Dust was sorry. So Aurora picked Nuke against Gamer Legion, and they lost 13-1. Saw, yeah, they played Dust 2 against Gen 1. Gen 1 picked Dust 2 and lost 13-4. So it's a bit of a this cool, like, gamble call from... From Aurora to be like, oh, well, Gen 1 enjoys yeah. the map, but I know we could beat them on it because of maybe their past experience as well on it. Not only that, but just we know we're way better than they are as individuals, so let's just go to an aim ground like Dust 2 because we know we'll run them over. That, for me, is a sign of confidence. They're not like, oh, let's pick our best technical map where we're super comfortable as a team and all the rest, right? Then they could have gone. 
they're thinking, let's just bully our opponents. What map can we do that on? Mirage or Dust 2? Mirage is banned. And that sign of a confidence is a very good look for Aurora. Well, this is a pretty good look as well as the first few stages of, of a uh, Ancient of Anubis. 3-1, to one, and they lost the pistol rounds. So they really bounced back effectively. Up against the rifles, Grix on the AWP. Hayes, we know he can be super effective. Is he going to be able to slot into a war system and still have that same potency? Well, I don't... I mean, it's not a long-term thing, right? It's just about whether he can do it for this event or yeah. not. And he, we know he hits hard. He's not going to have to do a huge amount in this team. And there won't be much pressure on him, right? When you've got, like, got guys like Gecko, Kenzie, Norby around you, you know they're going to be carrying the yeah. mantle. So, Rick should be able to just play his game freely here. Not loads of pressure. And I get a team like Gen 1, I think like we were saying earlier, is someone he'd be very used to playing against. Not necessarily this team, but this level of opposition, right? Well, he plays against higher level, like Gen 1 are even below what Aurora Youngblood play at. Um, I, look, like, go. I think like this is a massive achievement for Gen 1. You know, they are a team that struggle in like TCT play-ins. They never even made a main Swiss. Um, so I think that kind of sets up what they are like as a team. And I think they did show a, a yeah. good fight against Source. So it's, and we know, I know players like Brooksy and especially Kevin Dubek can play at this level of competition. It's just about seeing if they can readjust Deco. Conscious of an aiming push. Deals with one of them. Also did spot a player in connector. So I think there's a confirmation. There's actually only one player towards A and they are going to be hunting Drac down. Yeah, I wonder if they want to be able to just secure the control that they can rise up and make them an easy kill. Curse is going to go through the molly, but Grix can hear that, so he's ready for that fight to come through. And Aurora make that round look easy. As you say, predicated off of Deco's information, they get to kill tags a second and spots a third. So they're able to piece the picture together, get a very good idea of what's being set up by the defense and how they can get past that line. So 4-1. Just want to highlight Rix once again against uh, Gamer Legion. He did have a very tough time of it on the second map. Sure, they, they just struggled across the board at Aurora, but he was 3 for 13. Mm. First map, 8 for 15. So yeah, he's okay. definitely going to be looking to show some better form here against Gen 1. Yeah, I think Gamer Legion is a big jump up for him with the caliber of teams he would be used to playing against. Um, and I think Aurora did just seemingly struggle as a whole, so I don't think maybe he was necessarily yeah, exactly. like, the biggest problem because everyone did. Um, but uh, even in that round, you know, like, he, he gets that one quite important frag. And I think what's really good for Aurora that round is that, like, you kind of have the information there's probably only one player towards A. But even regardless, they do just move as a squadron. Like, if there was a second player on default, they can just trade him out. Like, there's no double guessing. It's just very confident plays from Aurora. And I think that's going to be something that's going to be very hard to dismantle against. If you are playing in this manner for Aurora... They can just simply outplay Gen 1. Yeah, and that, that's why I was just wa waxing lyrical about why I'm impressed and happy to see them picking Dust 2 in a series like this. For sure, yeah. They don't have to play very complex, deep, layered Counter-Strike right now. Just go back to the basics, like we wanted to see out of NIP against Gun 5. Gun 5, we're playing the exact sort of style of Counter-Strike we wanted to see out of NIP. We should certainly keep an eye on those other matches, Freddy. It's something we were guilty of not doing in that previous game, so we can let everybody know what's going on. And I want to actually see how NIP fare against Monty. One of those two teams going to be eliminated. I've already seen two in the last hour. And then extend it back even further and you can add more to the mix. But I think this is still fine. Quite a lot of damage has been done. Aurora just going to group up here with their three remaining players. Devo Duvek as well on the board. He was zero and three. Kind of a bit unfortunate. Did you see, do you follow, I don't know if you follow KRL on Twitter, but he was having an interaction with someone lately where they were talking about this team. And then <laughs> he was talking about them being salaried, and he was like, yeah, but this team don't deserve salary. But Gen 1. Yeah, but I support them. I want to support them and enable them, so I give them salary. 
what a what a bizarre <laughs> A bit weird, right? Like, okay, I mean, the way to install the confidence in your team, man. Imagine if you I'll try find the tweet and send it to you. Imagine if you hear your, like, owner saying that. What an insane thing to be saying. KRL's a, a, a very nice... Like, he's, he, he seems like a, a decent guy, and he, he's, you know, he does seem to do well for French CS, but he does seem to also just be crazy. I hope I'm not misquoting. Oh, here we go. I've got it. All right. It says, yes, you are right. They don't deserve salary, but I want to support French players. And we're not speaking about the same amount of money between Gen 1 and Bleed. Oh, because you're criticizing Bleed about um, wasting money. And then someone says, oh, oh. team's ranked 135th. And then that's when he's like, yeah, they don't deserve salaries, but I want to support them. So there we go. Okay. So it's like a backhanded compliment in a way, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. It's a weird, like, I think it's like, yeah, either way, I think, like, I do somewhat agree, like, Gen 1, you know, they're not a, not a great look. I think they've done very well to get here, but I don't see them, I, I kind of hope they can build off this in, like, future tournaments type thing, you know what I mean? Like, hopefully this, just, this, this isn't, like, all the success they get. Um, even in advance, they're 8 and 5, like, they've just about kept their spot, but they haven't made playoffs. That's kind of also like a, a pretty good showing of like you know, losing to Ruby, Forza Academy, Rustec. Cool. Alternate attacks as well, like a great result. But, uh, now, Drac has been on form. Four kills yeah, in the yes. pistol round. And right now, a double opener to give Gen 1 a real good chance to winning actual gun rounds. Lovely flash assist between them and Brooksy as well to enable Drac to find the double. First snap, first shot was snappy, second kill was free. What do Aurora do to try and get themselves back in the round is the question. Three versus five. They don't have any obvious options available. It looks like it's a beast split on the cards. Even damage would be welcomed at this point because they'll get a full buy in the next round, no problem. Oh, Drac, he actually did catch a glimpse of the player's head on his screen. Clearly didn't notice it. But he'll be flanking Deco out here, and Deco... Oh, it's not. It's actually Norway. All right, big opportunity. Can Aurora find a way to break down this B defense? Surely Norway's dead here. Okay, but Nori still gets one frag before he gets backstabbed. That's massive for Aurora. But unfortunately, they can't build off any of that intermittent, ex intermittent success. And Drag completes another 4K round. Both rounds Aurora have won have come from Drag getting a quad kill. So what you're saying is Jack just needs to get a quad kill for another 11 yes, rounds. That yeah. is exactly what I'm saying. Map. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, good luck, Drac. That would mean another 33 kills, please. Did you see the game between uh, Rhino and Zero Tenacity? Didn't watch it. Did you see the, the score that it yep. went to? Yeah. It was also 30 on the first map and then over time the and then 13-10. I know. I think Jackie. Don't you wish you were casting that game. Oh already? mate, I think Jackie and Vince were casting. I was like, I, I might be what, like that woke me up. Thinking of that game last night, it woke me up in like a fit of sweats. Yeah, you got trauma from seeing them having to cast that. Either way, Grix has found a great opening kill. He must have been on the front lines there and towards E box, and he oh, finds a second, yeah. just locks down the line. Devaduvik tries to get info, but Grix takes him down. And, oh man, this round's completely fallen apart for the CT side. Lovely impact out of Grix. This is just a classic, guys, let me go kill. And it's like, okay. You, just, you literally just let him walk up and, he, and he, he domes two people. That's very impressive from the stand-in. Coming from the academy team. Trying to put a good, put a good shift in to kind of broadcast himself to the world. And, well, you know, might end up playing another game tomorrow if they continue like this. But it is, it is T-side Anubis, you know. So, like, we don't want to sit here and be like, oh, it's, you know, all doom and gloom for Gen 1. Uh, but I think the issue and the gloom does arise when you're like, Drac has actually just won both their rounds single-handedly. Yeah, and I also wouldn't say it's only that Aurora are leading 6-2 right now. He's gone hunting, he's found Drac, and Shark will go down as well. For me, it just feels like there's a disparity, right? There's a, a gap. There's a skill gap, a difference here between these two teams that's quite evident. So I don't know if the map will make any difference, or the half, for that matter.
but let's see. You've got to have the belief here if you're Gen 1. You've got to fight and give it everything you've got. Okay. If they are going to stop this game from completely disintegrating, they've got to win this gun round. Yes, this is uh, one of those bigger rounds, right? And... Um... I do appreciate how Aurora has been pulling kind of towards this B bomb site. So Gen 1 try and kind of react and, and shift out of B main to take that control. But if they do go too far, that's when Nori will be lying in wait to snap them away. Alright, well, Lackey on the front lines. I don't know knows what job he wants from his just there, so he does it himself. That's a big missed shot there from Kersey, and that's round over. Moonshark is the one who pays the, the price for the missed shots as well, because he's the second player to arrive on the bomb site, and there's just three players standing there. Sure, he gets a kill, but was always going to be traded. Bomb has to be picked up here, and Norby almost gets caught in a fight there. Yeah, no, he will be fine. Thankfully, he didn't hang around there. Just pick up the bomb and join up with your teammates. He doesn't know if anyone's come through canals. That's the only concern right Wait, now. Wait, he could die. Debbie oh, Duvac's making a lot goodness. of noise. No, okay. I was okay, somewhat worried at kind of like the lack of support that he was getting there. That was maybe the one thing that I was like, why is just nobody helping him apart from Lackey potentially? But I guess just they wanted to hold down the bomb site. But taking a while, but the bomb shall be planted and Gen 1 will be looking to save two M4s and also an AWP. doesn't really matter in my books you know saving guns is great but you need rounds on the board at that point this is the currency we're looking towards Actual money in the bank i shot there from kersey but it's a consolation kill and aurora gaming i mean it's a very simple t-side coming through from them right now i like the pressure applied from lackey in the middle this is a lot of pressure being applied across the board right there nading the smoke open e-box they're asking questions of those b-bomb side players and then all of a sudden they've just changed up the direction and there's three guys walking into a terrorists win so tough for gen one to try keep tabs across the map there's so much going on okay so that save will mean that they can purchase back into this round and that's all good However, conversations go as of, you keep on saving, you keep on having purchases. You've got to be able to do something with it. So this is when Gen 1 said last round, it's kind of when they stop from the, the half running away from them. They have that same opportunity here because of their reinvestment. see the the effect that this t side have had on bullying the bomb site with how much they are point like pushing to, to maintain control to to take control and it's costing them a lot of utility without getting loads of reward but at least they do have devil duvex space not looking to take the fight to Aurora here. They just want to bunker down in the bomb sites, and that could also just be another problem because Aurora at that point will get mapped to three. And they have all their options available to them. After throwing the usual one towards mid, so they're clearing it out. They will make their way in towards B. Okay, Lackey dying there is not too great, and it actually does cause Aurora to maybe reposition themselves, and they have to wait for this smoke. Flashbang completely blinds. Brooksy, but Devo Duvek is there to save. Two versus five, and Aurora actually looking quite limp right now in round 10. So Gen 1, we called upon them, and they're delivering. They're going to get themselves a third round. Just either has to die before the timer, or get out of there and save the AWP. What will it be? They're wrapping him. Oh, wow. Oh, I think he died just before the end of the round. I think you know, so as I well. Be on the last second. Who 
Yeah, it's a step in the right direction, but money is really good for Aurora. So even if they lose this round, we get bombed down, they're still going to probably have money for the next. Um, and Gen 1 need to be cautious where they have a, a, a tough road ahead of them. But that was a pretty nice round from them where they just kind of don't allow Aurora... They, they, they don't get faked out by Aurora's default and still are able to catch off the mid player and then also not allow the tech to push to be successful. There's more pace from Aurora in towards mid. We haven't seen this from them yet. Baki's already gotten full control and he's got support here as well. Bomb has still been dropped in the back lines, but I just like to see them just keep moving forward with this instead of just pausing and holding angles. I will say, I think the difference is that Grix is holding for the aggression. He's been doing it so often that Grix is just waiting for that to happen them but they're not looking like they're gonna give it to him so Griggs currently is completely out of the fight and Aurora after making themselves very clearly known in middle gonna be taking that bomb over towards B and I have a feeling they're gonna try wrap around but we do have Debbie Duvek understanding this and also now spotting it out so you see these players in connector primed and ready they have a full understanding of what's going on Oopsie. and well, just now, actually, Unshark to try and hold down this bomb site. They're not clearing him. They have utility out. Bomb yet to be planted. He's just wasting time. Percy and Drax so close to rotating. And now here they are on the scene. Grix has to go nuclear. And he's not going to expect the second player to come through connector. Drax saves a day once more. All right. Well, Gen 1 starts to breathe some life back into this half now as they win consecutive rounds. And... Uh... That was a well locked down defense on the B bomb site. The fact that the player in the corner stays alive for as long as he does is actually the key there, because that buys time for his teammates to come through E-Box and join up with him on the defense. And everybody arrived on the scene just in time there for the CT side. I actually have a little bit of belief in Gen 1 if they can get 5, you know? Okay. I mean, 4 is not even awful. 4 is not awful as well. 5 is, like, very legit. And because of no bomb going down for Aurora... Money's going to be in a pretty weird spot. We do have a Tech-9, we do have the Galils, we don't have the Orp out for Grix. Um, so yeah, Gen 1, I think, definitely poised to be getting 5, and that would be, well, 3 in a row to basically cap off a actually not too bad of a half. How quickly Counter-Strike can flip over. Yeah, it's true. For me, I feel like Gen 1 just need to survive. That's all I'm looking at for them. Just survive half by half. Don't even look at the map at large. Just focus on this half. You're alive, you're breathing. You put up a competitive scoreline. That's all that matters right now. You need to keep it up. Last round of this first half. And for the first time, Aurora game I'm trying to work with the broken by here. Almost ideal of purchases. But instead of going for some of these defaults we've seen where they try and confuse the opposition and end towards a site, I think they might just want to go straight towards a Kenzie leading the charge with the Tech 9. Unshark spotted, mollowed, naded. He's in so much trouble. He'll be dispatched with super easy. But look how fast. There's basically three players now rotating onto the A site. And because Aurora probably realizes this to be the case, they freeze and look to reevaluate themselves. Deep up now, numbers because they've got that man advantage, but Gen 1 looked to have a pretty good read on the situation as Drax track, yeah. back up in towards that A bomb site. And he will arrive just in time here. Aurora Gaming start to get a move on. Grix is going to dump the utility in for them. Smoke has been bloomed. They're waiting a few seconds after the smoke blooms. So that the CTC no further presence, they think it's a fake, and look at that, there was a player who started to move out of position, but the util comes through, Gen 1 will keep themselves rooted on this B bomb site, and the frag can be anything to be able to find, only Deco left, and he will fall as well, a very good recovery from Gen 1 sees them get 5, can they keep up the fight going into the second half?
Gen 1 has now made this very competitive. It felt like Aurora were potentially running away with this map, as we'd anticipate. But three rounds on the trot means if Gen 1 win this pistol round, we have a game on our hands. Yes, sir. That is how things are set up right now. It was a good fight back from Gen 1 to recover five in the first half. A little bit of pressure mounting for Aurora Gaming here, I reckon. I'd say so. Let's see if they can open up with a pistol round win to release that valve a little bit. Looking to head towards a our Gen 1. Brooksy. I'd say he'd be more of a an instrument of lurking. See if he can catch any players off. If they over aggress and try to run through. Or they might just go straight back to him be dangerous because lying in wait is Deco and Kenzie both with dual Berettas. Yeah, I wonder where do they finish this round because wherever they try to go, there's going to be a contest at the choke point to get into the bomb site itself, whether it's front of A main or E box. They're just going to try and feel it out before they make any decisions to commit. Brooksy just sends himself into E-Box. He goes straight down and it's like, yeah, okay, guys, I, I think you need to go A here. But now, the T-side are in the gnome. Bricks, his dual brothers are looking to shine. Will be some bite back and Kersey coming through from middle will be the spearhead for success. Bomb can be planted, but look how quick Deco and Kenzie are. They could deny the bomb. Unfortunately, a little bit too late to it. Kersey might have to do even further damage with this P2. 50. It's going to be really tight. The kills need to come out, and so far it's in favor of Deco. P250 in hand. It's already silenced too, and will not be able to do any further damage as the retake is successful for Aurora. Okay, well, they'll breathe a sigh of relief. I mean, it's not like that was an easy pistol round by any stretch of the imagination. They were made to work hard for that one. Bomb 
Upon sword comes through here for the key side as well. That will be a mark, mark of success for them. But Aurora start off here in the second half nicely by winning that pistol round. Just settle the nerves a little bit. I think that what won them that pistol round was not only the fact that Brooksy allows them to kind of get away and also check, but it was the smoke on A main as the execute was coming in. Gen 1 would have called cancel because of that smoke. They didn't want to go straight through it, which, which is a right call, but it kind of then just screws them. Um, and I think you can see exactly why uh, as they get into this like sense of just uneasiness and like don't know really where to take it. But... In this second round, Gen 1, they've reinvested back in. They've got Galils. All Galils currently now as they've lost Kersey. But uh, Aurora, man advantage. They're looking pretty good right now. Yeah, they absolutely are. Should be able to go up 9-5. Remember, this is Gen 1's map pick. We go to Dust 2 next, which is a bit of a... A questionable one for Aurora Gaming because it's not like they've shown great form on the map. Not like, not like they've shown great form in general as of late, to be fair. But I feel like they've picked Dust 2 because it's a, a map they expect to be able to just bully Gen 1 on, right? And because of their result against Saw this morning. This is an interesting round. Devidu Vex got in the back lines. This has made Aurora probably very uncomfortable. Grix is just out of position. And alongside that, the entries are coming in in full force. Drac, he's a force to be reckoned with. He's done so much in those early stages for Gen 1, and it's given them basically three rounds now. This was a round in which Aurora Gaming find that opening pick, and it looks like it's basically, uh, well, okay, not locked in, but they're just sitting very comfortable, sitting very pretty on the bomb sites, waiting for Gen 1 to come their way, and then... Boy, do they. I mean, Drac has been going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Aurora Gaming. No problem at all in this map so far. This is an interesting outcome of this round. Like, this just continues the force by wars. And on the CT side, worst case scenario is winning pistol and then losing second round. You then see from the economy, it's 1,400 straight across the board. Gecko will be able to save the M4, but apart from that, everybody else is going to be on 5.7s. However, hey, as we have seen today, how brutal those 5.7s can be. Yeah, we've had some crazy rounds, none less so than that round out of Casello where he just goes ridiculous. I mean, the triple kill on the full eco, he didn't have armor with that 5-7, found some ridiculous headshots on the... I mean, that was basically the beginning of the end for NIP on you. So we can't count Aurora Gaming out of this, but Brooks, he's just looking to try and move with pace and vigor in towards Evox right now. There are numbers on this B-bomb site for Aurora, so Gen 1 rightfully so just pump the brakes a little bit. However, there were numbers in the previous round, and like, how did that go? They, they didn't get a single kill. It was all because of Devil Duvek and him lurking through middles. So you can see Aurora, they're very much anticipating and probably, if anything, scared of this happening. So they're really like firmly holding in middle. Kenzie's got a flashbang. He's gonna pop them through B, B main, I would suspect. However, there's even one player playing anti flash. He's come away from that now. He's actually holding. This flash can be brutal. They don't throw a flash? What? Where's the utility? Why has Kenzie just gone and swung with them? Okay, they've just thrown away that round, I guess. Um, not sure what the point of a triple swing dry when you do have two players able to be propelled by a flashbang. Your guess is as good as mine. Just force by not really coming up with anything here for Aurora Gaming unfortunately falls flat on its face and Gen 1 looking locked in here as they're going to reduce the gap to just one and they've got nothing to lose in this game Freddy you've got to fear a team that has nothing to lose the most dangerous creation to any society is a man who cannot lose yeah exactly who has, who has nothing to lose that's it also, big damage from uh, from Lackey. Like, it's sure it's great three kills, but it does ultimately mean nothing apart for a bit of economical woes, which aren't even actually that present.
You know, it's actually like a really famous quote by someone. It's like, yeah, like what I said. Yeah, what's that? Uh, the man who has nothing to lose quote. Never what contend about? with a man who has nothing to lose. It's like, it's yeah, a really yeah, like, a... lots of philosophers. James Baldwin, yeah. that's the one. The dangerous creation to any society is a man who has nothing to lose. I like that. Motivation, right? When you're in way, you can become a monster, for instance. Yeah, I mean that quote actually is heated with like it was like 1920s, uh, like civil rights movements. So it's a lot of like it's actually quite a hefty quote, you know. Yeah, true. But, uh, Gen I don't know if I'd level up the score like yeah, that. Yeah. I didn't expect those words to come out of my mouth. Neither. Especially, like, this is exactly what happened when we were watching Gun 5. Where, like, they won the pistol and then on Ancient, remember, when just, like, they came back into it. It's kind of similar to what's happened with Aurora, where, like, you have the lead, you've been playing pretty good all game, and then all of a sudden now it's 8-8 it's eight, eight on your opponent's map pick, but a map you're very apt at playing, though. haven't been great for Aurora on the snap lately, but they've played it 15 times in the past three months. So I think it's like their most played or their second most played map kind of thing. So yeah, I'm man, I just didn't really envision a world in which they would lose it. But now I gotta start considering that eventuality or that possibility because Gen 1 are on the T side. They've got a leveled up scoreline, they got wind in their sails. What was the scoreline at its most one-sided for Aurora? 6-2? 6 6 uh, 7-2? I mean, it would have been around that. Yeah, because it was 3 at the end, so they got 5. So it was 7-5 at the half, right? And then, so 7-2. Right, well, it's completely fallen apart since then, but now they've got all the weapons their hearts could possibly desire. Four-pong grips, all the utility in the world. Do they flex their muscles? Do they try and take the fight to Gen 1? Or... Try to bunker down. Kersey, he's the one who's flexing his muscles with the AWP on the front line. I love that play. Yeah, big fan of that from Kersey. You're the underdogs, but you're not afraid to take that fight. And look at what it's done to Aurora. They've sent everybody scattered on that A-bomb site, and Gen 1 have the perfect read. I don't think Kenzie's... If he does get back in time, he's just going to be, you know, side... Yeah, he's going to be sideswept. Like, there's nothing he can do about that. He's completely by himself, out in the open, out of position. Aurora, please just go for the save. Do not go for these fights. Don't oh, try no. and give Devil Duvek anything. That third kill for Gen 1 already is far too much. I'm so scared. Ah, oh, they've got no money. Gen 1, are they really about to take the lead and also break the economy? Uh, yes, evidently. Evidently, they're on the brink of making that happen. CT side of Anubis is a punishing mistress. Ooh, mistress. That's the first frag in the round here for the CT side. They've just completely, like, dropped off the face of the earth, have uh, Aurora Gaming here in this match. Things were all rosy in the first half. They started off swimming. Terrorists win. We need to get them back online. They need to lock in here. This is the upset broadcast. So if there's ever going to be an upset, it's on Stream D. This is exactly what we've been made for. Gen 1 should be getting double digits here. The French team who could. With no expectations and just the, the gratitude of being here. Might be able to take a map off Aurora and see if they can push that that any further as well. I mean, imagine Aurora going up, going to Dust Two down zero one against Gen One. Ooh. Dust Two is the map that Gen One picked, before, which means they fancy themselves on it quite obviously. I mean, yeah, it's it's a weird one because they played like they played against Saw and then got demolished. So. Aurora, like, I was a bit like, okay, it's a bit surprising to pick into a map which, you you know, your opposition did pick into this morning. But, um, 
it might go to the pathway for Gen 1, especially if they're able to win out Anubis. And this anti eco is actually causing a little bit more, a little bit more hardship than you might anticipate. any concern about the round itself i mean there are two players on this b bomb site right now kenzie's gonna head back in that direction he's got an m4 okay he finds a frag that does make things interesting though. oh he actually does do the smoke at a second uh second bite at the apple i'm always gonna rotate through here as well looking for the strategy right now for gen one finds the dink but no donk and they know that Kenzie's back here. I mean, he got a kill through the smoke. Are they just going to completely pivot away? It looks like it. Yeah, they're going to be evading him. But it's also just a fake. Kenzie's been played like a fiddle. And Kersey runs away with the bomb and then gets called back over. Kenzie's like, are you kidding me, man? Like, are you really kidding me? Did you really fake that in a one versus two? Come on, dude. But um, I don't think you can go for this retake. I think this is... A save the A1S type buying beat. in the next round though, man. But like, you still gotta be, you know, like, if he could drop a, a the AWP to Deco, and it's like, there's no issue whatsoever with the Ecom. Um, or, actually, he might not, he, he wouldn't have any utility, so, uh, scrap that, oh. I guess. But, uh, oh, it's winnable. No kit though, ah, actually. No kit, yeah, yeah it's just damage. Good damage, very good damage. But unfortunately, it won't result in anything more than just that as gen one from explodes they find double digits okay now this is now it's code red now it's alarm bells sounding this is the round no, no. this is the round where it's code red as in like okay, if they lose yeah. this if they lose, they lose this 100 yeah, yeah, yeah. but i don't think it's quite there yeah, yet fair enough Where do you see this going? Um, Gen 1 winning in regulation, I reckon. Ooh, bold, but I love it. Let's yeah, favor I that. Just, it's just that Aurora haven't been great lately, and they've been diabolical. They've been abysmal in these past few rounds, so I've just got no reason to believe that they're going to be making this one back. Fortune favors the bold. We are that. Ooh, Kersey. He's already got one opening kill in very recent history with and a kind of an aggressive ult play. And unfortunately, he won't be rewarded with another. Grix's reposition was being accounted for. However, he was a little bit off the mark. And alongside that, Lackey goes one for one in middle, keeping Aurora in the driver's seat. Grix omnipresent around this map, making his presence known. Okay, well, that's exactly what Aurora Gaming needed to just restore some confidence was just steamroll this round, keep numbers alive, and make a bit of a statement to Gen 1 that they're not going to just roll over and give up the map here. Not to suggest that that was ever in the past, but Gen 1 were taking it from them forcefully. Another round back here for the CT side. Has to be a whole lot more where that came from. Freddy, you didn't... Uh... Didn't let me know what you thought where this one was going. What do you think? Oh, I, I was agreeing with you. I, I, I was saying Gen 1. Yeah. All right. Yeah, no, I, I, I was like, I was like that. That whole spew was supposed to be like a. I agree with you. Like Gen One, take it out in regulation. Uh, but that last round doesn't fill me with the most of confidence, especially when Grix is able to kind of cipher off two kills like that. Well, let's see what's going to happen here coming into the twentieth, because there's no money in the bank for Gen One if they lose this one. They And just not a great start. It's perfect from Aurora because they get the aggression out of B main. 
and then are able to basically reposition their forces towards A and middle, which is exactly where Gen 1 are currently heading. Yeah, that's true. I mean, they don't really have raid options. I think that they're heavily reliant on Deva Duvek right now, who's been able to make his way into towards mid. He's not and the player that opens up the fights. It has to be the players in A main. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the, he needs the players in A main to do the heavy lifting initially to actually get him into the equation, right? And you can see the CTs, they're certainly aware of this potential right now just about whether or not if anyone's looking in that direction when he actually pushes through because right now they're focused on his main nor we will look back in that direction he's got to trust his team. he has a job to do that's control cameras and well then Zubik does activate he'll go back and forth he doubles what? down but deco will eclipse that with the quad what an insane sequence of play from deco he literally just turns back and forth and nails everybody in his sight line deco we were commenting on maybe him being a little bit nerfed because he's forced onto the rifle and Grix has been on the AWP, but, well, if he's playing like that, then I don't care whatsoever. Crisp and clean as Deco shimmers to glory and Aurora make it even. Okay, and now they play against the Pistols. Looks like they've been able to restore calm. Just the one hero, AK, here to try and traverse. It's all they've got to get past to get their noses in front once again. I do like that there's a little bit of utility that's been sprinkled into the mix. With yeah, them. it makes it a lot more... Comp like, it, 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 there definitely is some, like... Um... Yeah, like, I mean, like, it makes it makes it actually like tangible. It's, it's not just a let's run at them and hope we can succeed. It's like, okay, we can actually do something a little bit more tactical this round. Ironically enough, though, I think it's actually the Glock that starts it off with a, a dink on Salaki. Surely not. I don't think it would have done that much damage. But the AK, the hero AK, actually paves the way for them. They've got one more flash to use as their disposal. And they actually don't take the space that would have been granted to them from that kill in Palace. Right, well, in towards the safe bomb site they go. Lackey is incredible. Rix is allowed to two of them to cross. A little bit of damage inflicted. He's taken down Deva Dubik, though I'm pretty sure he had picked up a gun. So at least that's one of the main threats disposed of. Bomb plant going to be found, though. That in, itself, that in itself will be regarded as a success. Brooksy looked like he dropped his mouse on the floor there or something. I don't know. Yeah. Track is certainly dead. And as expected, Aurora Gaming will win the round. Like I said, a couple of kills in the plant, still pretty good for Gen 1. But now, now it's all about them coming into this next round. Yeah, I mean, that was, uh, I think, like, for Gen 1, it's, like, a weird one where you're like, okay, we got we got two kills in the bomb down. But I think that position they were in, they definitely could have won out uh, the whole round itself. But instead, they've now lost the lead. We were kind of hoping for the underdogs. We were definitely putting them in favor. We do love a good underdog story in, on this stream, and we've already seen one come into fruition as NAP capitulated in the first round. And now, Aurora looking to stamp their approval on this game. Grix, super aggressive, does not care about anything. One single Molotov towards stairs, and he's been able to open up the proceedings here in round 22. Can't do this with an orb, can you, Deco? He's pushed the entire way through A main, and then there's been a molly thrown at the front of A main. Wait. And so they'll have no idea that Deco's gotten past Oxy them. He checked he was it. Oh, so that's insane. That's just muscle memory. Kenzie should certainly die here. Grix has actually kept them alive, and Oodshark hasn't realized that Kenzie's crossed out of that corner. Oh my goodness. Everything all over the place, but it actually works out really well for Aurora. I actually don't know how Kenzie's even got away from that position as well with like those two kills. Um, I think Brooksy, like, I don't even know why he cleared that. It was like a, it was like a really weird, like, he kind of checked it half asked and then was like, oh crap, there's actually someone yeah. there. Um, it was like, like I said, that's yeah. muscle memory. It's just, you're like, oh, click, corner, click, corner. Oh, wow, there's someone exactly. there. Exactly. Um, <laughs> but the, the thing is that, like, Aurora were actually in a really good position for the rest of the team to succeed. So even though Deco did die, 
Uh, you had Kenzie close. You had Grix as well holding the kind of deeper line with the AWP. So it's like, it felt like Aurora were just in a very good position to react off the information they were given by Deco as the well-placed microphone outside of T-Spawn. But Kersey, there's no way he can win this. And, well, there's no time left, actually, as well. He goes to tap the bomb. Now we'll go for the plant. Lackey has a grenade, but chooses just to use the AK. Grenade missing the mark. Nori coming from A main. You can see Lackey's backed off. Trying to wait for his teammates. One versus three. It would be in total. And I think he's played this perfectly. They think he's towards camera. Percy tries to reposition his aim. But Lackey gets the better of him. And just about by the skinner of their teeth. Aurora take back points. Goodness. They get so ridiculously close. A hell of a lot closer than it should have. Percy... He's come alive in the second half, unfortunately just falls short, 12, 10, Gen 1. Actually a really important plan comes through there as well, right? Because that just enables them a little bit more coming into this next round. Edges a few players into AK territory, a few extra pieces of util will be afforded. But now they have to win two in a row to force it into overtime, because Aurora Gaming, they've found their mojo here on the CT side. <laughs> going to be very difficult for gen one that bomb down though does mean they have at least something to work with and it's no over aggression it's not, over -aggression. It's, it's not like the massive aggression we saw from last round aurora they're actually playing a little bit more of a default three one one majority towards the b bomb site and gen one equally just trying to feel their way out in this round taking a main pretty much for free and they're looking to also take middle the bomb is outside a kind of towards carpet i wouldn't be surprised if we see unshark picking up but instead they're actually going to be heading now back towards the b bomb side utilizing the control they've got towards a main and middle and it's completely faked out aurora so they're in a very good position right now aurora still heavily focused in towards middle Deva do uh, excuse me no it's actually brooks who's doing a very good job of keeping that presence and keeping the pressure but deco actually playing Behind the flames there, uses it to obscure him and then gets the kill for free. But now the focus will have to shift to the opposite side of the map. The bomb carrier's got to cross successfully. Bomb will come through and Aurora are going to have to retake. It's a very lumbered retake. They can still, they're, they're still making their way out of middle. They're taking very long to make this approach. So the bomb's going to be about half tick when they start actually making this progression. Rack as well with perfect utility at his disposal. Great flashbangs as well minimizing the time aurora they might actually make the decision to go and save this in a five versus four but they're going for it all the time left surely they don't actually go and commit i think they have to save they have to get away with as many players as possible and try to do as much damage as possible as well and sure they will get all the kills but as i mentioned it was just way too late on the approach so gen one put us one round away now from overtime they just never really gave themselves much of a chance there in the retake. Uh, I kept watching thinking, surely they're not going to save you. Surely they're going to start to throw themselves into the bomb site. But it feels like everyone's just looking around, waiting for somebody else to actually make that initial move to get them in towards the site. So, oh my goodness, Freddy. Overtime now on the cards. Is it actually going to happen? I mean, I'm not going to lie. That last round was played quite perfectly by Gen 1. And on the severe yeah, duality, you have like Aurora over rotating towards mid and A and then also taking so long to make their way back. So you have a real like bipolar split there of, or sorry, a, a real polar split of like Gen 1, you know, if they can play a similarly perfect round of CS. Well, I think K KRL might be quite listen, happy. We barely, ever see, we barely ever see any personality from the Aurora game guys if you've seen them in interviews or anything like that how could they have bipolar personalities if they even have a, a, a one, personality one. mono yeah exactly <laughs> they don't even have one so oh but Grix. all right Grix, this is different this really is a change this is gonna be a double swing freddy no one percy gets left hung out to dry Grix doubles down there's gonna be a second What's part deco of the setup deco what is deco doing is he playing anti i don't know blackie will arrive just in time but in general he keeps him at bay gen one could just reset you into the three versus three Kenzie's also not been spotted, but he will do the spotting. Unshark. They know he's towards stairs. Good and they bait. also now really good know. Bait taken by yeah. 
I don't think they know that Nori's here. I legitimately no. don't think they do. And now, yeah, Brooksy's left by himself for one versus three. He's picked up the first. AWP in hand. Bomb on his back. A minute on the clock. However, Kenzie just keeps on nading him. Nade's going back and forth, but one doing a lot more damage than the other. And also, Lackey, he's rotated away to go and join with his teammate in canals. Unfortunately, though, that has left the A bomb site open for Brooksy's taking. A hell of a read coming through from Brooksy there. It's going to have to be a two versus one retake from Aurora Gaming to try and close this out in regulation. And Brooksy's playing in behind the pillar. You guys can't afford to take as long as you did in the previous round to try and make it. He's going to peek on a timing. Spray's good for the first, but Lackey will trade. That is the advantage. That's the bonus of retaking arm in arm, chain together. Aurora win in regulation, but only just. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a walking billboard right there of why you should have the buddy system. Like, that's completely perfect uh, for Aurora. And for Gen 1, that would have been a complete round over if it wasn't for Deco playing, like, anti-flash really late. Like, you know, his, his Gricks have got both kills. And Deco yeah. then plays anti-flash afterwards. Like, it's a really messy kind of sequence from him. But luckily, Grix's heavy lifting doesn't go for naught. Yeah, but they got a bit complacent. They were up 6-2 and they maybe thought, this is going to be an easy game. We just kind of play at 50% and we'll win it. And then Gen 1 actually forced Aurora to respect them, right? Uh, they were able to win important rounds. They got the lead at one point. And then at 10-8, Aurora realized, okay, there's a job to yeah, be done to here. Win. And they were able to get back on track. So... They've led, they lead the series 1-0, Freddy. Can they close it out here on Dust2, or is there a twist left in the tail? Dust2 is a real weird one, because, like, they're not a very good team on Dust2. They've actually never won it um, in the last three months. I wonder if they've actually ever won it since it's come out. Yeah, so they beat Saw on it online once, which is actually quite a good result. Uh, but apart from that, they've lost to, and to be fair to them, probably the better teams in Europe. So, not the worst, but as I mentioned, like, I think we're going to be seeing double orbs, and... Gen 1, they picked into it this morning. However, it wasn't met with open arms as they've also lost to some pretty decent opponents on it recently and especially saw 14, oh, sorry, 13 to 4 this morning. Brooksy read into Aurora on the T side, charging up long. Bomb should be planted. I'll be trying to play a, a retake, oh, sorry, a post plant, but Uncharted's making their life very difficult alongside Dark. Drag. Yeah, Aurora are really struggling to actually get past these players and find space for a plant, and eventually they'll activate the C4. Deco will find a double. What? How has he gotten all three of those kills so quickly? P250, it takes him a while to get in the action, but boy, when he does, he rules the roost. Yeah, Unshot kind of like tries to test his luck too much, right, with that Cookley style. You know, he is French, to be fair, but um, like it takes him a while, um, and he overextends, and from that, you have... Deco being able to initiate himself. Aurora, good first round on the board. However, Gen 1, right away with a rebuttal, will be purchasing back in with the pistols, SMG, and Scout. Well, let's see if they can find a way to make this force by work. For now, Aurora Gaming keeping it bog simple. Just AKs thrusted in towards this B bomb site. Well, they did find an opening. It's in a bit of a risk. A rebuttal here, my god, Kersey's scout is just locking down heads. He's found two kills and eventually they'll give up the control. They'll let Aurora Gaming get into the site and that'll bring with it a plant. But there's a two-man advantage for the CT side to make this retake happen. They're gonna flash. No, Deco's got the flash, so he's going for this fight. Very brazen from him, and well, it's only going to reward him one kill. In the meantime, Brooksy comes through the smoke of doors, and Gen 1, well, their force buy will pay off. Just marvelous scouting coming through there from Kersey. Three kills is uh, really impressive. Did he get the kill on the player who dropped down from spawn here as well? He must have, right? He, so, I would assume so, yeah. Yeah, surely. So he gets that frag, and then he finds two blistering headshots over on that B bomb site. Fantastic from him, man. To answer back. Yeah, what more do you want? And it's good to see that it's not just the Drac show. We definitely saw a map one. Like, it literally took him getting quad kills or, or kind of really abrasive doubles to actually get them the round one so it's nice to see that other people are kind of carrying their weight very early doors um okay yeah sure 
Yeah. So this is why I want the guy to stay on a sniper. Or, nah, no, but it. how about what's better than one sniper on Dust 2? Two primary authors. Tell me I'm wrong. Uh. Yeah, that's actually a very good point. <laughs> also, they know Drax alone. will have a time of it going into that side. They do. Well, he actually isn't. Not anymore. The player has actually been able to snake his way onto the site. It's Cursey. This B bomb site is his home, man. And no one is welcome. There you go. Even more. Heroics out of him. Nah, I think he's, he, he's out for the count. Util, flashbang, smokes. Wow, Kirstie, what a rotation because, look, well, actually, firstly, Drac getting a double in itself is really impressive. Like, he had to stay and just survive and bide the time for those rotations because um, it was it was Kirstie who was kind of fighting in middle a little bit. And he does come through with a good rotation, just a nick of time, and plays towards Car sign they were not expecting whatsoever. Deco has put himself onto a Galil. Remember, the bomb deep behind enemy lines. This is going to have to be some feat if he wants to win the 1v3, and he's already just been spotted as well. Yeah, I mean, there's no way he can make this one work. It's been played to perfection here by Gen 1, just not giving anything away until a fight favors them. And that will be Gen 1 doubling up, getting across the line against the Force Spy. A lead should be added to here as well, right? Because it's just going to be pistols coming into this round for Aurora. I don't think Gen 1 would have, Gen 1 would have been too upset with the fact that Aurora picked Dust 2 coming into this. No, mode. yeah, neither. I mean, obviously, they picked Dust 2 against Saw earlier, so clearly it's a, a comfortable map for them. I was kind of thinking the exact same thing, and I think, uh, like, Nuke wasn't was in the veto, you know? Like, they could have picked into Nuke, which was also somewhat of a surprising fact that they chose to actively not do that. They chose to actively fade away from their, kind of like, one of their better maps as well. Will they come back to Rue? That decision is the question. I mean, I kind of feel like with Ancient waiting in the wings, there should be no way Aurora loses the series from here, but I'm still traumatized from what happened earlier with <laughs> NIP losing, so who the hell knows? Who the Gun hell knows? played some incredible CS, didn't they? Mm. I think Mirage would have probably been the map they would have wanted to pick apart from Nuke, but that was insta-banned straight off the gate, yes. so, so I ain't that big. Like, yeah, very wisely from Gen 1. Uh, but yeah, we've seen today, like, you know, anything is possible in Gen 1. Well, unfortunately, the man disadvantage early on here in the first gun round. That's quite big for Aurora Gaming, seeing how they still do have, like, players on scouts, for instance. And now with a lot of map control, they don't have to end towards A. It looks like they're poising towards this, especially with Nori outside of Long. But if they do, they are walking into the Lion's Den. They've smoked off CT at the same time they've smoked the front of B tunnels. That's going to get Gen 1 thinking they're going to try and split their way in towards this B bomb site with most of the players making their way through mid and then maybe a lurker. Still more util being dumped in towards that B site. But Gen 1, they barely reacted. They still have two players deep in towards Long and Bruxy remains on the same site. So Aurora haven't done anything to force rotations. And I actually really like that Lackey is still exploring in towards this B site. He should hear Kersey repositioning, you know. Uh, yeah, look at the minimap. Lackey's called back for Aurora to go in towards that B site. Really good decision making here from Aurora. And yeah, Gen 1 blindsided. I think they were also expecting that pump towards the A bomb site. So as soon as that final frag comes in, Aurora should be able to close out this round. Defo kill here would be pretty big. I'm surprised Kersey's actually so actively fighting this and well now they're actually trapped in towards long because of that frag onto David Duvek and yeah Kersey does know about Nori but I don't know if it's gonna allow him any salvation as they are hunting him down they do not want him to save anything and he does get one he's still going for it how many will they lose in this crusade? Nothing apart from that. They'll keep three players. It's perfect.
It is perfect. There's enough money here for Gen 1 to at least afford another investment, but Aurora make sure that they don't let Gen 1 get too far ahead before they win another round back here. Is this a case of Deco go kill, or do Aurora actually have to think this thing through a little bit on uh, on Dust? Honestly, as like as kind of like easy as it is to say, I feel like it is just a bit of Deco Grix go kill, especially on the CT side. Yeah, I think so too. Deco is so ridiculously good at this game. If he is able to just tap into that flow state, then he's by far the best player on the server. Yo, without even a this, shadow of a doubt. It kind of, of feels like with Deco, the only problem with him is that it seems like you, you only get that out of him when he's in the mood to play like that. And I think sometimes, you know, he can maybe get in his own head a little bit. He can get a bit emotional, frustrated. You know, tilting can affect him as well. It's just, I, I guess the frustrating part about Deco is just he's got this undeniable talent, but hasn't really seemed to make the most of it, you know. I agree, I think he's got such a high skill ceiling and... Well, in this round, he might actually have to deliver some of that. There's Aurora. Oh, they've made their way out of long, but Brooksy's heard this. He Never abuse the smoke. Brooksy trying to retreat. He's got no support, but he might not need any support. Greg finally shuts him down, but he does survive on only seven hit points. Lackey's also on 23. Deco might just try and make this move in a solo endeavor to give his team the advantage and some space to work with. Unshark, oh my god, he's giving him a timing. Deco is going to be just walking out of this B bomb site. Little does he know, it's completely vacant. Old timing? <laughs> Whack a mole. He Literally, reappears yeah. and he whacks on Shark down. That's going to open up the B bomb site. Plot will come through, but look at the HP. 27 health you between too. the two of them. It certainly is advantage Gen 1 here right now. Like you said, there's still another smoke to be thrown, and he's going to pick up a fresh molly. However, Gen 1, they're doubling up in tunnels. Oh, we've got both Orpers. The big daddy of Deco and the rising star of Grix. Both on rifles. As you mentioned, Kersey and Drac charging through tunnels. Deco just gives him that kill. The Grix lies them up. The spray, it connects. Aurora somehow snatched away that round. Oh, great work. Barely any health between them, but they lock it down. Fantastic double from Grix. We spoke about in the first map how he'd want to put up an improved performance after things fell apart earlier on today when Aurora lost against uh, Sashi, was it? Uh, when Aurora lost to... Game um, of Legion. Game of Legion, rather. sorry, yeah. That, that's it, yeah. Been a long day, either way. Uh, Grix didn't have a great time of it in that series, but he's looked a lot better here against Gen 1. He's contributed in a big way so far here on Dust 2, and he was a big factor in their success on Anubis as well. 3-all and an anti-eco for the T side. expensive for uh, Aurora in these, some of these past few rounds, so I think definitely, like, keeping as many players alive as possible is definitely gonna be, like, exactly what you want. Um, four, I was gonna say, yeah, they had to keep at, at least four. I think Brooksy getting that, that kill is very good, in my opinion, for Gen 1. Two kills, valuable for where Aurora's economy is at. But, Still an eco, so it doesn't really matter. Aurora, they take the lead. They're a map up. This would be a great round here to continue their pursuit to success. Yeah, if Aurora can win this round, then they'll feel like they've got momentum behind them once again. The comp this is one of those big confidence rounds. Yeah, true. But then if they do get in that position once again, they could have been heads because like i was saying earlier it feels like they just dropped their heads on anubis once they got up 6-2 and so i can't allow for complacency to creep in again here gen 1 have already proven they deserve to be respected and it would be i mean just tragic if aurora were eliminated here losing both their matches in the atlantic qualifier oh God, right yeah that would be ooh. 
Aurora eliminated and potentially NIP on day one. Yikes. What's actually happening in... Okay, wait. We'll, I we'll saw talk about those other games after saw, this break. Yeah, uh, I, I was brother. taking a look at... The Aim Legion were very much up on Inferno against Saw, which I thought was quite surprising. But yeah, we'll talk about all this round. Because they're very split up. Wait, wait. That goes all the way in B tunnels. Is he going to clear this? No. Unshot gets the better of him. And now there's the confirmation that everyone can head towards A for Gen 1. It's a 3 versus 5. And are they even going to have a post plant? Grix is trying his goddamn best to make it so shot through the smoke, so tantalizingly close. But Drac, still alive, still kicking. Looking to lurk around these smokes as the rest of his team now have come towards him. Bomb only just being planted. Molotov going to push him away right into the hands of Drag Grix. The bomb's planted for him. There's no smoke or kit for the defuse. This is his easiest clutch of his life. But swung from two different angles. He can't readjust in time. Kersey's pushing him with the AK and Grix can't get that close range shot even though there's no kit on the board. Drac will have ample time to defuse and that's because Aurora took so long to plant. Deco wins that. I'm just <laughs> saying. I'm just saying Deco wins that. Either way. Um, yeah, you're right. Aurora took way too long. They just seemed very scared when they got onto that A-bomb site to actually make the move to plant the bomb. They thought someone was probably going to try and jump up elevator and disrupt the plants. Either way, gave Gen 1 that extra time to set everybody up in the retake. As soon as the bomb plant went down already, the UTIL was raining on, raining on in and the pressure was being applied. So, good retake. Solid stuff from Gen 1. Even though there was a TK in the mix as well, it didn't disparage them. Scoreline leveled up. Well, that's an assertive opening kill. Kersey peeks towards long. Similar fashion from the last. Also, what's interesting to note is that Deco is not lurking towards B like he has done in so many different rounds. He's actually going to be committing towards A with the rest of his teammates. And I honestly think they're just going to go straight up and try and attempt to steamroll this site. But Kersey, with the AWP, is going to try and disrupt that as much as possible. Look, they've also pushed B. Yeah, there's all the information in the world available to Gen 1 right now, which means, again, they're going to have the numbers on the correct side of the map once that hit comes through. Kersey's been phenomenal on the CT side so far, doing his best track impression in the first half of the Lubus. Do not stack is what it says on the box, but stack this bomb site, Gen 1 will. That seems to be the big issue. Like, they get the bomb down way too late. Only now being planted. Nori, one versus four. There's no way in hell he succeeds, and he shall not. Gen 1, two in a row. Yeah, and also breaking the T-side's money in the process. So they've gotten themselves a lead in more ways than just the scoreline. Uh, it kind of feels like the round isn't even about the bomb plants. It's just about Aurora trying to kill everyone on the A-bomb site and win the round like that. And I must say, Gen 1 have done a really good job of, even though they aren't contesting long, which they barely have throughout the half, they've got numbers on the bomb site, right? And again, it's not like they're gambling. They're getting the info, so they've got a very good idea of what's going on. And they're fighting for that site. They're not like playing for a retake and sitting deep into CT and, you know, pushing short to fight middle. They're standing out in the open, you know, platform, fighting from short, maybe uh, from Gandalf, but they're, they're constantly still looking to fight for the site. I think it's working out really well in their favor. Aurora, they seem to not completely know what to do when they get the bomb site, and there's like four versus fours. Um, and even though Grix has actually got two kills in kind of both of those, sorry, a kill in both of those rounds, and tried to alleviate pressure, it's just not been enough. So, onto the low buy. Gen 1, trying to end off this first half strong like they did on Anubis. Echo with the full bags, dude. I honestly think that Deco wouldn't be far off of Monacy in terms of uh, reaction time. I know, hot take. Listen, I obviously Monacy is a lot more consistent is a hot with take. it, but... Alright, well... I think... Good I, take? I think that's a very, like... Good take, Hayes. Like... Deco okay. is amazing, and I think people don't realize how good he actually is. <laughs> he actually started coming to the fore when I, I think, like, started casting International Counter-Strike around 2021. I remember he was in the one-win team with, um, it would have been Glowing from Nine Pandas was in that team. There was Travis from Amcal, um, 
and then a few other players who aren't coming to mind now. But I just I remember just being mesmerized because I don't even cast in really South African kind of strike up until you that were point. like, what? I start casting international CS and I'm yeah, watching Deco and I'm like, man. what in God's name is this, right? I, so, yeah. I've been a fan of his for a long time, actually. I remember on that one win roster on Mirage, I saw him get 21 kills in one half. Yeah. Yeah, that was right, okay, buddy. Uh, ooh. Ooh. This is not quite that same glory we were mentioning. Or has been taken down. Unretrievable, though. That's a big factor, remember? Still just on the pistols, but the bomb has been planted, and they're trying to get into CT, and they will be getting into CT. Oh, it's a bloodbath. And Shark, left by himself, Devil Duvek, in similar manner, trying to see if he can make anything work. He's being tagged down at distance. Finally, Deco falls, but the damage has been inflicted, and Aurora make it work when they are just on the pistols and don't even have armor. Yeah, that's a, a big problem for Gen 1 because they've looked really good to fight to this point. But like I said in the previous series, same point, man. Same exact point where you're the underdog. You're such a massive underdog in a really important game like this. You can't give these gifts away. These anti-eco rounds are like gold mm. dust, Freddy. And they've just lost one. Hayes right there. That's exactly what is separates the kind of best and the like good and the best. It's something that I see... Um, I think at tier one, it's exemplified even further because teams will be capitalizing upon your mistakes in those scenarios. It's like, how good are your low buy rounds? How good, uh, sorry, your anti low buy rounds? How good are your post plants? How good are your retakes? Like, those kind of small little things, especially post plants, really get highlighted as a, um, like, I think it's like, yeah, those those like post plants when they when they're bad they get heightened and highlighted at the higher level. Um, five to five, Aurora. This could be them dismantling Gen One on map two. It could be Freddy, but we can't make that inference just yet. Gen 1 are still alive. They're still kicking. Have they got any kick left in this round? Because... Oh, it's not great. But there are pieces. And they piece together this puzzle. Aurora Gaming. Move their way to the B-bomb site with focus on middle. And they've lost their captain. But... They should be able to break through this, right? Pistol, A1S. Oh, they're not being able to do so. Bombs also being dropped out in the open. Deco, once more, called upon for a clutch. Can't land the tab. And it's the low by wars continuing. There was pistols on the board for Gen 1. And they still are able to give themselves six at a minimum going into the second half. And that was all down to the smoke being cleared out in CT there by... Uh... By was it Brooksy? I can't even remember. It doesn't matter. Um, clears out the smoke, gets a kill on Lackey. That just throws the spanner in the works for Aurora. Completely disrupts their flow into that B bomb site. The player who's trying to come through tunnels is relying on his team that his teammates coming up ramp, but they haven't been able to. So then he can't really do his job at that point, and it just all falls apart for the T side. Hmm. They're trying to. Kind of go for the exact same play. Interest enough with the AWP as well in hand. Like, it's probably the worst weapon to have for a play like this. But it can be really valuable in the post plants. They need to be able to get onto this site. And I wonder if Grix actually is the one that will try and open it up. Unfortunately, they're going to have to wait a little bit longer. That smoke has just been replenished towards B tunnels. And Gen 1 currently have very good space. And a pretty decent read that it actually might be towards B, but Brooksy, he's the he's the man who makes the decision. He's still cautious about short. Does he ever actually start rotating towards middle? That smoke is going to force him to do so. And yeah, Briggs opens it up. I was wondering if they're just going to utilize oh, the orb to, to open up the bomb site. That's exactly what they do. Aurora now, a 4 versus 3 pro spawns. Let's see if they can at least even up the scores. 
Yeah, it's going to be a tough retake though. They've got one kit, two kits, a little bit of utility. But how do they even find a way into this bomb site? There, Vaduvik's going to be hoping that his teammates can take contact first and try to take some attention away from him. But the Aurora Gaming have just got such a robust post plant setup on this bomb site right now. They've got every option covered and then they've got an extra layer if required. However, you can't plan for that eventuality. Head being ripped right off. Kersey misses a key shot. That bomb is taking away now. And sure, he's making a highlight of it, but there's no way for him to win the round. That's the first half done and dusted. We'll be back in for the second soon enough. Aurora were at a stage once where they were in the grand finals of ESL Challenger Melbourne. Now, they're in a position where they're neck and neck with Gen 1. The challengers are really putting up a, a very strong fight and I think a lot stronger than well any of us anticipated, that's for sure. I mean, Aurora were at Challenger Yongshiping, they were at Challenger for DreamHack Winter and Summer. So they are regulars at these Challenger events. And they're having a tough time in this closed qualifier against the lowest rated team coming into the qualifier. So that's not a good look for their chances. In the lower bracket as well. You really hate to see it. But. Oh, never mind. I was going to say, but no. Grix is actually the first way to fall. Deco. He's a walking highlight oh. reel. And you know what? On 13 HP, it looked. That was a world. It looked so possible. And now it's Lackey's time to come into the limelight, unfortunately. Similar to the rest of his teammates. Only one. Molotov for Nori. It's a good idea, but 
against Double Swung. Gen 1, a pistol round win in the second half that gives them the lead. Ooh, now that is scary. I wanted to say it before they started the second half so I could really sound like I knew what I was talking about. But I think Gen 1 win this map from here. And, and that was just based off the 6 or half-time scoreline. Just, uh, so just based off of what I've seen... Yeah, ju well, just based off of what I've seen from Aurora in the first half here, I am i don't have much confidence in their CT side. Um, I, I don't think, like, across the board, all five players are going to be able to lock down the defense, you know, round in and round out in their respective parts of the map. I think Gen 1 are dialed in right now, and they're pushing incredibly hard as a team. You know how much this game means to them. You know, when you're the underdog, you've got nothing to lose. You, you know all the boys are banned together. You're feeling it right, and everyone's giving it... Uh, everything right up until the last round. There'll be no frustration or tilting creeping in for Gen 1. As for Aurora, like, you, you've you probably won the series in your mind before it's even started. Yeah. And now you're having a tough time of it. Yeah, no, like, 100%. Like, I, I completely agree. I think there's definitely an ounce of, like, respect not being given over to Gen 1, and they're demanding that respect. And they're doing so by keeping you on your toes and leading these games for the second time in a later stage of the map. Gun 5, they've also just taken a map of Sashi. So, you know, this today's all about surprises. Oh my god, Drat in the smoke. It, Trix is like, how have I died? How is, how is, what? What's this? What is the communication right now? How is Kenzie also almost just died? And on 6 HP, sure they've got log control, but Gen 1 instantly react up shorts. We didn't see this once in the entire first half where Aurora were able to just get themselves up short like that into the A bomb site for free. Not once. And we've seen it in the first gun round here from Gen 1. A little bit of pressure applied long initially, but it's numbers up short. They're just trying to keep the focus of those A bomb site players, of the CTs, over towards long and that creates all the space for the rest of the team to make their way in towards that a bomb site through cats so looking damn good nine six they need four more rounds here on dust two and we go to a third oh baby oh baby third i love map. the sound of that man <laughs> of, of, of me or, or the map honestly you but also the third man. Bit of both, bit of both. yeah no like i think um Honestly, I this is a lot of points. All roads lead to a third map. But, however, I feel like in the next gun round, we're going to see Grix and Deco double orping. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was about to say. Give us that double orp. They're but also that means investing Kenzie a has lot. to save. I'm confused. Yeah, Kenzie has to what's... save all his money. No, this is fine. Kenzie can drop an orp in the next. Just about. Um, and same, and then, De and then I guess Grix can buy his own one. Um, yes. Kind of like no no armor scout is a is a bold play. I feel like I'm I'm not sure how. I much. like it. Yeah, I, I, I back it. I guess you gotta do these kind of bold plays. Brooksy, okay, dealt with. Also, big injection of cash into Lackey's bank account. Also, a rifle has been picked up. So bolstering now this Aurora side with the advantage. N1 are gonna be attempting to head towards B. I can imagine. Yeah, but before that, they still want to just make sure Aurora don't get that insight, right? So just a uh, molly on towards Catwalk just to make sure that they keep Aurora focused towards that part of the map. However, Aurora have padded up the defense over towards B. Kenzie's rotated across. This is going to be an all-out war here. Four players looking to move their way in towards the side. There's no splits. It's one direction. They're not a boy band. But they are... Hitting shots. I don't know, man. There was something in there, but I must. They didn't, though. Yeah, I mean, that 5-7, like, we've seen what it can do today. I, I really believe that Nori would go nuclear with it. Yeah, and he was close range. But unfortunately, I think Kenzie has to do a little bit more to divert their attention and, you know, set Nori up, basically, for success. But that never really comes in. And so, Gen 1, double digits. As we were, to be honest, anticipating. I don't think this is too... Crazy yeah. uh, of a sentiment on this round. But double orps next round. I really hope they do it. I think that would be like just send them, just have them running around the map. Just literally just go do what you guys want. Go kill. There is a, a world in which if Aurora do genuinely lock in, that that double orp setup could just be like an impenetrable defense here for Gen 1. Either way, let's see if we're going to get given what we've been asking for. Surely, there's no way you have Deco and Grix on the team together and you don't double off on the CT side of Dust. 
But Freddy, we're gonna be deprived. Aww, that's so boring. They can buy another warp as well. Do do it. No, give us what we want. Like, I don't know why. <laughs> like, it's just, I feel like it's such a rational thing. It's like, obviously, we double orb. Just two, of all things. Send one mid, send one long. Just go kill them all. Is this is how is this how low Deco is on the orb at the moment? They're like, is this nah, what bro. it's a reflection of? Yeah, they're like, Deco's they're just like, like I, I don't even want to use it when I can. To be fair, he was it's not even like he's just creating this. the space. Yeah, he was, but this is CT side dust. This is an orb is paradise, and it's not like Facts. this is a round where you have Grix on your team and you're like, well, we brought him in as an orper, so we're gonna let him have the orb. No, you, you, this isn't Deco sacrifice. This isn't Deco sacrificing the chance to have an orb. This is him choosing it. So. Yeah, let's see. What can you do with the rifle? Prove us wrong here, mate. He might have the opportunity because they are going quite fast towards this B side of the map. Blackie is going to be throwing down good counter rush utility. I think they're just going to wait it out and then pop towards it. Deco of an AWP right now. To be honest, it actually would have been maybe worse. So I think having a rifle in this exact position is, is best with the utility. In the meantime as well, you can see that they've Taken heavy long control. They've left Nori. And they've got players able to rotate over. Deco's still got a full belt of utility. He's gonna be... Wait, he literally dropped the smoke. Oh my god, Deco, what are you doing? He literally dropped it to Lackey. Instead of throwing it towards B main. And because of that, they just run through. Deco's out of position. Lackey's like, bro, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm a little bit speechless and I talk for a living, so I'm not entirely sure what's just gone down there. If Deco, I'm, I know you said having a rifle's not, not bad in that position, but I'm just thinking of him posted on that angle with an AWP. You know, you, you avoid the first flash. The first frag is free. Like, it's the freest kill he'll ever get in his life. And then Lackey can play off of him, off of that contact. But they just get both uh, rolled over. Not even a contest on that B-bomb site. Gen 1 up to 11. And Aurora Gaming, I mean, we haven't even seen them do much damage in a round, let alone the half here on their CT side. No. Oh. Ooh, some frags coming in favor of, of Gen 1 at the uh, end is always going to be, always going to be nice. Like, one for one there, ideal. You just want to get as many weapons out of the way. Rick's had a lot of money coming into this round, so he can drop over two, I would have assumed. Um... But no, massive miss, like, realistically, a massive blunder in that previous from Aurora. And they've picked into this map, yet a lot of question marks around it, because of their just, like, lack of playing on it in previous times. And right now, a lot of those questions are not being answered, or rather, they are being answered, uh, and they are confirming our confusion. Not the answers we want. Gen 1 looking well oiled right now. It's going to be a late long take coming through from them. It's just uh, Deco who's there alone right now. So he's clearly floating around the map. This time maybe he'll give himself a, a fighting chance. But a difference. Rix gets the opening kill. Deco, realistically, just has to get one. Just one in information. It's all we need from you. Rix is also on yeah, the scene. Yeah, because they've got the opening oh, already. So, oh, no. First like, player was going on. looking the wrong way. He's just, yeah, unfortunately it's not. game over. It's not the deco we know and love, right? He's also, if he tucked and just waited for Grix, he was he was a little bit wide out. If he tucked and waited for his orper, who was very close. Deco, what's good? He was so good I on mean, Anubis as well. That's not even the problem. The problem is he just misses the shot on a player who's clearing the left corner. That first frag yeah. is as free as they come. His aim, he was just crossing, was literally just off the head. As simple as that. Norby is 5 and 14. Kenzie, 6 and 14 against Gen 1. That is, there's something very wrong with this Aurora team right now. That is so far out of characteristic, um, out of character for them, right? Not sure if, uh... Not sure if there was uh, an issue with um, Alfie, right? Resort, 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 sorry. 
completely got people okay. raced up. I don't know if it's there been was a an long issue. day, man. Yeah. We had a, a hell of a lot of tech issues in that previous series as well. So. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if restart was the issue and... now. Yeah, I, I mean, I saw someone talking. It's just hearsay talk of the town that he was having a problem with Norway and Kenzie. Norway and Kenzie, the same duo that had a problem with Jerry. So I don't know, man. A bit of a common denominator there. Yeah. That was why they let that, 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 that was the kind of start of Aurora. It was a, 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 yeah, exactly. a, a move away, was a move away from Jerry. That was kind of the, the whole point of it. Cause it used to be a Forza core or at least duo. Yeah, Jerry, Kenzie, Norby. Looked very good in that, uh, that Fours team. Either way, eventually it all fell down. They formed Aurora, and they looked really good when they brought things together. Like you said earlier, man, that honeymoon run with the new org, new team, but things yeah. have come crashing down. Either good way, this year they played well, they played very well this year, and this is this is what I mean. Like they went from being in finals of Challenger to now losing very meekly. Gen one, they're cruising for a cruising. They are they are annihilating Aurora. They're just walking onto bomb sites and claiming it as their own without any opposition. I wonder if Aurora are second guessing their decision to pick Dust 2 here. Freddy, you think so? Yeah. I, I don't think the map has gone according to plan. It has just been a disastrous CT side from them. Gen 1 on the brink of winning seven rounds in a row here throughout this T side to close out the map and level up the series. A I think it's quite easy to say I was not expecting this. I was not at all. But that's exactly what happened this morning with Gun 5 versus NIP. And we were literally commenting on the fact that Nuke was literally in the veto. They could have picked into Nuke, but instead they pick into Dust2, which is not a map they're hugely fans of, and it does not come out in their favor whatsoever. They have lost both their map picks today, and it's going to now those rounds. I remember like we, our words were literally like, what are they doing? Like, this is like yeah. abysmal <laughs> Counter-Strike. Like, it, it was like very, very poor Counter-Strike. And yeah, like just missed shots and even when they had the players not having the good setups but here we go for our third and final map of the night on stream d it's the esl challenger atlanta eu close qualifier one team will have a spot through to the main event and currently in this lower bracket whoever loses this map will be eliminated all right well we've set the table it's time to dine Ready for the feast as Deco eats up Unshark. Don't know what Shark tastes like, but Norway knows how lead tastes. Good. Think they're through the smoke. Deco's not going to sit by idly either. He's looking to get a move on here with the retake. They've gone straight through the smoke. Pussy. Frags too, though. Eventually will go down. And Drac is so far away. There's a kit on Kenzie. This should be as good as done. Any heroics? No. He will get one kill. And oh, he actually gets all the kills. But... It doesn't really re it doesn't really result in anything you're still very much happy if you're aurora that you won out that round gen one they got the bomb down you know drac gets three kills in the round he can afford ak and a flashbang so right away gas fully down for gen one they are applying all of that pressure Gen 1 not going to waste any time here with their force buy already. Unshark's been able to get out into the middle. And he's actually crossed. He's tucked into the corner right now. Lackey seems to have an idea there could be a player there. But it's a uh, it's track there rather. It's a really strong position to have this early in the round. And this is exactly why. See, just something like that, for example. The aim is just not looking on point for Aurora right that now. That was exactly what we said about Death. We were like, this is like, how do you miss that? But... Well, Deco, he, he hears our calls. And he pretty much wins it out again for Aurora. So Gen 1's opening round will be extended. Drac. Okay. That's a great double. He is someone who has caused a lot of commotion for Aurora so far in this series. On 11 HP, is the 1 versus 4 really something that's attainable? No. Nah. 
All right, well, good start to the map here for Aurora, which will settle the nerves and build some confidence. I will say Deco started nicely. Important multi-kill coming through from him. You can still look at him and say, yeah, that guy, he can win the map alone here, but we need to see him at his best if that's going to happen. He can really eat Gen 1 alive, right? But we're just used to seeing that with the orb. I, I, I don't really you know. Pick. What are you saying? I was going to say, if you had to pick one player on the server to play to save your life, who are you picking? Save my life, like in real life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like he has to represent you on the server. Let's say he has to go through a, well, we'll say a 1v1 tournament. I mean, there's only one answer. Yeah, okay. Like, surely. Yeah, easy. Yeah. Not I'll on take Dust2, Brooksy. though. Not on Dust2. <laughs> yeah, any map but Dust2, apparently. I'm taking Brooksy. Which, oh, just a bit of bad I would say Drac on Gen 1. He's looked really clean. I'll take Kersey then if you go track. Because Kersey looks really good. He's had some good orbs. Yeah, he, he had some good yeah. rounds with the orb. On, on, Those on scout Anubis shots too. were very tasty as yeah, well. Yeah, on Anubis as well. Either way, Freddy, first gun round here in Gen 1 again, looking to try and jostle for mid control early. Hey. from the main man himself. I was just singing his praises and he opens up this round. Bricks with the orb, unsuccessful hold at range by his opposition's orper. And now it's a, an attempted retake from Deco and Lackey. Oh man. Hoping that he can win the lotto and oh, find wow. the frag through the smoke, but it's not going to happen. And they'll now know exactly where De that is as well. Going to pick up the orb and try and head for the hills, but he will not be afforded his life. Gen 1 get themselves on the board. A well-worked round. Mm, Kersey doesn't pick up the orb, which is a bit of a negative. But apart from that, it's great to get their first round on the board. And leaning on Drac when you need is, is honestly a fine piece. Like, if you need Drac to, and you need him to come alive so you can get the round and get the ball rolling exactly what he's done right there but aurora still have the ability to reinvest only issue an asterisk on this round is kenzie with five seven We did say Gen, we did see Gen 1 play quite a numbers based approach on the T side of Dust 2, which is a pretty standard approach, I would say. Barely any defaults out of them. So I, I wonder if that's going to be a theme to their T side here on Ancients as well. Bricks, how is he just, where's that kill come from? I think it was fully blind through the smoke, maybe? Um, and it's actually, it's an advantage for Aurora. And they don't have any primary control apart from A main. Brooksy try and fight his way out and he shall for now but brought down to very low hp gap in this smoke or identified nori never gonna expect him this close and they don't on denied it's track's time to shine Been praising him so much and this one versus two he's found the first through the smoke Drax pulls out the usb but drag's pretty much full hp as he's oh. Trying to create some space. Drax, I think, spotted him. Drax knows he's in CT, and he wins it out. There you go. How do you like them apples? Uh, I love them. Those are my favorite apples. 11 and 2. Drax right now is having a fantastic time of it here on Ancient. Gen 1 get past the force fight. Simple plan there. Into the A-bomb site. The firepower advantage works out for them. It does get close, but Drax clutches it. He's been so reliable for them today. He was incredible in Anubis, pretty much the sole reason they were so competitive. And he's come out the gate swinging here on Ancients as well. We played five rounds, and his teammates combined have got, what, three, four, um, six, seven kills. They got he's seven frags 11. across four of them. He is indeed. He also played that one as one perfectly. Like, he puts himself on top of the big box, elevates himself, and it completely catches Grix off guard. Really well played and the hero. Spearhead and Gen 1 to success. Those are two versus four as well. True. 
which is just going to compound the problems here for Aurora Gaming, just mentally, right? The frustration. Lackey's on as many kills as you would be on if you were playing in this game, Freddy. What, 20? Uh... Did, did you hear what I said? You or? talk, I love it so much. You talk so much smack about my gameplay when you have, yeah. you have not played a map in CS2 on Face It. He's got me there, folks. He's got me there. Uh, I actually Painted played, I, I played ESCA main. And like, you know, I'm not like, I'm, I'm not that bad. Still like 2.5 Halo. You just, uh, you just strike me as one of those guys, you know? I was good at CS. I'm and just gonna still say am. that and not provide any, uh, any explanation. I don't like you. <laughs> you love me, baby. Let's go. Three all. No sniper on the server for the CT side. Nor for Kersey, but that's by choice. And Brooks has got a Mac 10 here. Oh man. The, the SMG's become so popular. Oh, oh, there goes half the health deco. Lackey will get his first, but the fate comes through straight afterwards, and Drac doubles down. Man, this guy. Get him a drugs test, because he's on form. He's inhumane. <laughs> Kenzie, though. Oh, man. He's slipping the net. He's trying to make a play here, too. He's, he's slipping the net. around. I think he... Oh, everyone's dead. I was going to say he could, but everyone's died at the hands of Drac. Sorry, Drac did also just wallbang that third kill as well, may I add. Doesn't even need vision. Just walk straight in. Yeah. Certainly is dialed in right now. Kenzie has no option but to save this gun and Jenny will get themselves a lead. And surely with Aurora struggling as much as they have been in the series so far, if they fall behind the game here and pressure starts to mount, don't they just crumble, Freddy? Like, like, what reason do we have to believe that they can actually withstand pressure right now? Yeah, I was gonna say, like, I wouldn't be surprised if we do see, like, a Gen 1 just kind of... They just start dumpstering Aurora. Like, I, f I, f I feel like Mental will... Um, I, f I feel like there is gonna be, like, a period of... Aurora's just being like, how are we losing this? And it just gets deeper and deeper and deeper. Whereas Gen 1, they're gonna just be going up and up and up. Well, we've had some crazy upsets today already. We had Gun5 beating out NIP. Yeah, you heard me right. Gun5 beating out also NIP in the opening game. And then they've, uh, yeah, beaten Sashi on the first map of their series. In fact, Freddy... Oh, okay. Yeah, it's happened. Oh, my God. Not just a map up against Sashi anymore. They've won 2-0, and the four. second map was 13-4. Yeah, what? and that's new, by the way. The crown jewel of Sashi. So, what? um... I think Gun5 might be the best team in the world. Uh, Multi leading against NIP as well, 1-0, but currently down 9-3 on the second map, so that was the end of the third. Gun5. Two best of threes away, man. Is that all? Two best of threes? Up the bracket, wow. Underdog buff. Gen1's got a kill as well right now. Or is it just the Aurora debuff? I don't know. Open -shifted. Okay. Keeping a close eye on Norway yeah. here in particular because he's 19 and 32 in the series, right? We've played quite a lot of Counter-Strike so far. He's gotten two kills here on this map. Just want to see if he's going to be able to bring some sort of form. I mean, he's the IGL, so it's really important that he's in a good mental space. Yeah, I mean, look. 
you're you're just struggling to to get any traction going for aurora but my one grievance for gen one would be like if drac does just continue to to have this like if he doesn't continue rather to have this 170 adr performance is like will someone else pick up the slack because sure people aren't doing bad but drag's the main reason why they've got this position not only the clutch but just his kills in other rounds for opening up them he's all by himself right now the rest of the team in towards a main they're just letting Letting Drac do his thing. See if he can find a kill here. Create a little bit of space. Create some commotion. And now they're going to look to exec their way in towards the safe bomb site. And the script looks a little bit. Now Drac can try and do something on the lurk. But he gets caught off by Lackey. So now all eyes shift to that A bomb site. Through the smoke. Aurora making Gen 1's life very difficult. Drac also out. Their talisman is no more in this round. They're going to have to do it without him. And my questions about if that was possible might just be answered. It's down to a 2 versus 5. Unshark and Brooksy trapped in the spray. It does connect, but it doesn't do any meaningful blows. And Brooksy equally won't get a single frag. So Aurora do it flawless. Yeah, really important just to make sure that the belief is going to be kept in here. Retake is perfect. Everything goes according to plan. They get that first frag on the lurker, which means they're able to just keep all their focus on that A bomb site. Not like Gen 1 were ever really able to get into any comfortable positions in the post plant there either. Just lots of fights being taken out in the open. One by Aurora. They draw within one, but there's so much money in the bank for the T side that I don't think there'll be any anti ecos in the second half, uh, in this first half for the CT side. It's gonna have to be done on hard mode from here. Fight in middle, the skirmish lends its hand in favor to Lackey. Brooksy vying for a trade, but it's a little bit too late to the mark. Over three versus four, Gen 1. Probably just going to go walk up this B bomb site. No messing around, but that's exactly where Grix is. Even though he has been decapitated in this very position, now he will not make that same mistake. Still trying their luck. The anchor does fall. Look at Grix, like he's still here in a very prime position to shut all of this down. Molotov goes behind him. And the bomb is going to be planted right for him, but he doesn't react off it. He doesn't go to deny. That could have been the round winning play. Instead, he waits and Brooksy Ferrari peeks him. Lackey's on 9 HP after that interaction in the middle. So you've got to realize how low he is. This puts so much pressure on Deco. And he's missed the opportunity to get the free key, freebie on Brooksy. Molotov also is actually just trapping Lackey into yeah. the cave. But now they're holding for cave as well. But it doesn't matter. Missed orb shots. It's missed shots everywhere. How is Kersey still alive? The bomb's being defused. Deco's got a kit. And Aurora oh snatched that round away. I was so nervous. I thought that for a second, Kersey might actually be able to find a very tight angle on the diffuser because Lackey went to cover long. He thought the incendiary would have been enough to cover short. Gets very close, but Aurora Gaming will win the round. They almost trip over each other. Like you say, the incendiary at the front of cave could have cost him everything because Lackey just didn't have, have the health to step into it, right? Oh, man. Okay. Penultimate round of this first half. Gen 1 looking very competitive, even in the rounds that they're losing. They're constantly getting into like winnable positions and the early round, the mid round has looked good from them so far. But Aurora Gaming are showing us what they're made of. It's been a day of just confusion from everyone. Kenzie's one flashbang does so much work to deny them coming cave, make them miss utility. Spam, unfortunately, does not connect. He probably could have got a, a spray down at, at one stage, but... Ooh, that's not ideal. That makes noise. Doesn't matter, though. However, there's confirmation. I think there's two players in cave. Oh, this is really yeah, brave. Yeah, Kenzie's got to be careful there. He's really playing with fire. With fire. Oh. Oh. What? Okay, uh, oh, let's miss. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was waiting for this moment. Written in the stars. The 
the first time I've ever done that with someone. Oh, well, I mean, it's not surprising, honestly. My chemistry through the roof. Yeah, it's undeniable. All right, well, who will get the lead here? That's what this round is for. All the marbles. And Kenzie has a nice multi, but that's just gotten them into an even number game. T-Side's gonna get sight control, more damage done than they. Will it go deep enough? No. Bombs not gonna get denied. Grix tries to really over-aggress there. And he's actually given up the advantage. I don't think he should have gone with that for the USB. I think he should have just waited for his teammates. And now Deco and Lackey. Well, what? What? How has Lackey gotten away with murder? They weren't watching for him. And once again, it's Kersey in a one versus two. Spotted out. And Lackey, he does all the hard work. Deco just puts the cherry on top. It's looking markedly improved here from Aurora in these past few rounds, and they certainly have restored some confidence here. Individuals looking a whole lot better, bailing them out of these 50-50 uh, situations. One round now, one round lead. That's all Aurora Gaming have, but it's a lead nonetheless. If they can just survive day one, if they can just go to bed knowing they're still alive in the qualifier, that's good enough for me. Doesn't matter how they get the job done at this point, right, Freddy? That's a really important hallmark of a team is that they're able to win even when it's ugly. Ooh. Lucky, okay. He gets it done eventually. He's taken a lot of damage from the utility and drag back on his trigger. He's literally the reason why Gen 1 are even in contention on Ancient. With him standing tall in this final round of half. David versus the Goliath. And he's trying his goddamn best. It's always going searching here. I don't you know if I like Deco this. who's searching through A main. No, it's 4v4. You've got two players on the B bomb side. I think he just has to maintain control and he will actually tuck himself in the cubby just in time. Is this perfect? Because I think well, something they're going to go donut. For now. Like someone's going to go donut. Us, I don't know who's going to go donut. But yeah, so it's going to be Kersey. And it's going to be Devo Duvek. Will they clear him? Yes, I think they're looking for it. No, they're not. He's going to have two players in front of him. Round over. He's going to double his frags in a split second. And now you've got oh. Drak and Unshark. They know exactly where you are, buddy. Echo is going to give Aurora 7. They are back in full force can they survive in esl challenger atlanta eu close qualifier
And if I meet you in the middle, babe, would you give me all your love? Come and meet me in the middle, babe. And I give you all of my heart. And if I meet you in the middle, babe, would you give me all your love? For the final time tonight, we are back. It is the lower bracket round one matchup here. Gen 1 and Aurora locking horns. And we've gone the distance. I don't think either of us were expecting that, nor anybody watching. But we're here now. Aurora, they're in the driver's seat. And they're racing their way in towards this B-bomb site. Let's get it. They have the advantage in this neck and neck affair. Never do Vec. Might just be caught off guard. He's forced to evacuate. I think Aurora, they're going to try force the issue towards Long. That's exactly what they're going to do. Three players are there to greet them if they choose to do so. There's no flashbangs. So they're going to have to do it dry. But instead, they're just going to hold, waiting the lion to approach them. Nori does amazing work in the meantime, evaporating everyone coming from shelf. But the team kill in the mixture and Devu Dubek running back the years. Nori, he's been very quiet this whole game. But in this pistol round and the previous round, he's been electric. Drac with a kit. Nori doesn't expect this. And Drac, balls of steel, just holds the defuse, holds his nerve and cools Nori's bluff. I was thinking for a moment there, Drac is really going to regret throwing his smoke into the front of Cave, right? Because he would have been hoping to still have his teammate to work with him so he can stick to the fuse and his teammate can cover the smoke. But his team, he dies just after he's thrown the smoke and then it becomes a little bit more uncomfortable. Norway helps, uh, hopes that the wall dang would have been enough there to get Drac off the defuse. But nah, he just eats those bullets up, sticks it and gets a sixth on the board here for Gen 1. Early commotion in middle. Gonna be favoring the CT side. Unshark, now my new favorite player, as he's, as he's wielding the XM. Best gun in the game. Can't tell me otherwise. Okay, that's round over. Unlucky. You with your beloved XM? Yeah, uh, no, like... I don't know. On the wrong side of the map. I, I, if Aurora... So the reason why I say it's round over is because if Aurora just straight away accelerated, Devo Duvet could be completely by himself. And it'd be, it'd be curtains. However, he's been reinforced by Kersey and he got that kill. So now, Aurora Gaming have kind of lost the time that they once did have. And Deco, if he's eliminated here in cave, well, oh my god. I was going to say that's going to pretty much be over for Nori and Grix. But Deco's not only got a frag, but it's upgraded to the M4, oh. the XM. Go, Come on, do your best. Unfortunately, Grix sidelines him and Kersey on a quick rotation. He gets mollowed off, so we can't deny the bomb being planted. It's going straight through. Ah, it's a little bit too brave with my liking, and Deco is more than happy to just wait for him and eliminate him. I mean, that round was just swinging from end to end like a pendulum, but eventually Aurora Gaming will get across the line. Looked a bit nervy at a moment there in the 3v3 when uh, Deco was crossing paths with the other player in... In Jaguar, because if he goes down, then I'm, I'm pretty nervous at that point for the T side, but that doesn't happen. The, oh, Freddy, they're forcing up again. This is, I don't like this. I, I don't like this. I think in certain situations, sure, they're thinking, listen, we've done a lot of economic damage. If we can win the force here, then we're back into the game with a bang. But if you lose the force, that's got major consequences. Okay. Yeah, like, you just gotta save. 
it's, it's not even like there was one player alive. Like they still had two alive. And Gen 1 have, have maybe actually just let this game slip. This is a super bold call to be taking. And especially from more experienced players like David Duvek and, and Brooksy and also KRL who's, who's coaching them live and is actually being pretty vocal. I, I feel like someone should have vetoed that call because it's just, it's it's given Aurora so much space to work with now. They're not only going to be doing this round completely flawless, they're going to have an eco in the next and then Gen 1 are going to have... Like another buyout, but it's gonna be ten to six and Aurora with flawless T side so far. Yeah, man, it feels like they should be buying up in this round. We should be talking about a gun round now. A bit of a rush of blood to the head, I think, Freddy. It was certainly a brave call. Either way, it doesn't work out for them. Aurora should have three passage in towards double digits. There is a big stack on the speed bomb side, but it's toothless. It's just USPs. Right. So oh, that's a lot of uh, money. Wouldn't say so. And the bodies just all lie down on each other. Also, Nori was like two and seven. He's really come alive. Sure, as Ecos do supplement his his stats quite a lot, but Gen One, do or die for them now in round seventeen. Yeah, it absolutely is. There's so much that's relying on this round. And look at their investment, Freddy. Look at what they have to work with. There's barely any useful left after they throw their first wave. Ooh, what a nade, actually, though. They throw the first wave, and it actually works out with a lot of success. But Brooksy also takes a nade to the dome. Yeah, good damage to tenderize these team players. But that's just the way they got really required to win the round. Well, Aurora Gaming move their way forward. They've taken ground and they've done so pretty comprehensively. Haven't lost anybody in the process. They've got quite a lot of the map to work with, but Gen 1, they're making moves of their own. Oh, no, we... What a double coming through from him. Gen 1 look to try and make a play more. to lock Aurora in. Can he get more? He just doesn't have the health, surely. But his teammate will come through to join in on the fun. That's round over. Call it a day if you're Gen 1. You have to carry both these guns through so you can drop rifles to your teammates who have died. Going for it. Lackey's head. He's heard all the footsteps. This frag is free. And Devon Beatrice is now in the belly of the beast. Although, I was going to say, after that first one, maybe there's a chance that Lackey trades and... Well, now they've got nothing to work with to try and stop Aurora from getting to map and series points. He could have fought his way out, but Aurora, yeah, they seem to have just imploded Gen 1. Very, uh, very lackadaisical as being this French side after they won that pistol round. And as well, I think it could be just this kind of like war of attrition that might be getting the better of them. And the experience from Aurora is, 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 is really shining down out onto the server. Pistols out. Any magic for us today? Oh, they'd love to pull a rabbit out of the hat here. I mean, it is max round loss bonus eco, right? So there's Kevlar, there's upgraded pistols, an MP9 or two. Just feels like Aurora are locked in now. They've gotten over that little brain aneurysm that happened on Dust 2. Just a minor one, though. Is any brain aneurysm... Can any brain aneurysm be a minor one? I don't, I don't know. It sounds... A brain aneurysm for me sounds pretty daunting. It's quite extreme, hey. Probably, it's just a minor one. <laughs> Either way. They are looking a whole lot better here, aren't they? I don't even really know what a brain aneurysm is, to be honest. Oh, that doesn't sound nice. Um, ooh, I mean, well, lucky dishing them out. One for you, one for you, and another one for you. Sorry, what's happened to Aurora? They've just, like, come alive. Like, what's happened? Where, where was this Deco running around one tap on Dust 2? I mean, it was the complete antithesis of what we're seeing from Deco right now. 
And that's what I was saying on the map is it just it feels like he just blows hot and cold too much and I don't know what causes that variation in Deco. And I've, I've kind of just pinned it on him, you know, maybe getting in his own head when he really feels like it, then he pitches up and he plays fantastic Counter-Strike. But it's like, what kind of Deco are we going to get on the server today? Yeah, I agree. Reliable. Oh, okay. That's nice from Kersey. Probably just going to force Aurora's hand into the say bomb site, honestly. Well, they're going to be more than happy to do so. There's only one defender there currently, so they are going towards A, and there's definitely worse things for it. Drax, though, has rotated it in alongside Percy. This is now looking very fortified for Gen 1. Really nice. Great work. Numbers there, trades successful, and they've never had to relinquish control of the bomb site. It's just the lurker left remaining. And Gen 1 have kept themselves alive for another round. It was actually almost a carbon copy with what we had in the, uh, the second map, where we had a 6 all half time scoreline, and then, oh, it was 7 5 this time. It's all somewhat Same. similar, it's just the other way around. Yeah, still similar. Not over just yet. You're gonna have to wait one more round before you can go and enjoy your evening, Hayes. I am enjoying my evening, Freddy. We got good With you. Like, I got you yeah. as my company. Aww. We got the entertainment for the people who are enjoying the stream. So sure, dude. Where I want to be right now. That's why I want to. Yeah. Ooh, that's a that's a cool little flash to bounce off the wall. You normally see it when it's like um, they jump off and then. Kind of readjust, but Kersey does it all on the fly, which is actually she probably does warrant him a few kills here or there. But um, in the meantime, Lane is now firmly Ooh. in control of Aurora. Zombie and Kenzie, they've they're just pitched up in a big way. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're and at lucky it. There we as go. well. They've Wrap all been up, stepping up. It. They've all stepped up. And Aurora Gaming, sure, they probably shouldn't even be in this lower bracket. They got dismantled by Game Legion earlier today. And it did look very ropey against Gen 1 on occasions. But now, Devo Duvec, the final player for Gen 1. The French squad had done so well to even make it through to the close qualifier. There, you have to just give them the, like, the, the gr you, you, need to, you need to give them grace and be like, well done, you even got here. And you also took Raw to a third map. You took yeah. Saw to an overtime. These are feats that I hope they can then turn into more longevity, uh, like more elongated success. Yes, exactly that, right? There's certainly takeaways here from Gen 1's run in this close qualifier, but it's about to be brought to an end. Deva Dubek gonna get backstabbed here. Frag for free. Proceedings concluded. Aurora Gaming, as expected, are the victors, but yeah, it was a lot more difficult than they would have uh, thought it would be coming into the series against Gen 1. And like you say, that means that Gen 1 do deserve credit for what they were able to make of this lower bracket game. For sure. And we actually have a good couple results already through. So. We actually have the 